look at that. Quentin works again. Quentin has also had some bird with diarrhea dripping over him as well. So maybe it was the threat of being broken for parts. Maybe it was the bit of time I spent with some sandpaper, contact cleaner and spanners taking all the joints apart in the earths and uh, giving all the earths a good clean up. Maybe it's the threat of more diuretic bird poo that made the car start again, but start it does nonetheless. Now, I do need to get a bit more enthusiasm back to this car, and one thing that would make it better for me would be if it actually looked really cool. And at the moment, you can't help but notice these wheels are actually quite cool wheels. I think they're MGF, but the gap, the arch gap on this car is just nuts. It looks like it's on stilts. So maybe if this thing was sitting just a wee bit lower and looking a bit cooler, I might love it some more. And that's where this comes in, because I don't want to throw a huge amount of money at this car, because as we know, I hate it. So what if there's a quality budget option that would not break the bank, but would give me the lows I'm looking for and not sacrifice ride quality? Well, this is where this comes in from Max Peeding Rods. Now I'm going to turn this off because I'm getting a face full of exhaust right now. <coughs> Sorry, as I was saying, that's where this comes in from, Max Beading Rods. I've not used this particular brand before, but I've heard good things and I know they're not expensive at all. So let's have a look in the box and see what kind of quality we can get from this. Once again, the W123 does make an excellent table. So let's have a look what we get in the box. Now, first of all, I do rather like this black box it comes in with the uh, the gold embellishments. It looks kind of classy and cool when it arrives in the post. Actually, it didn't arrive like this in the post. It did arrive in a brown outer box, so it's kind of disguised from anyone who might have steely, sticky fingers in whatever postal system you're using, so it's not going to be pilfered on the way, which you shouldn't do. Any Most people in that trade are fairly honest, but you never know. It only takes one. I'm trying to open this neatly and tidily. See what we have got in here. This is a, this is quite a nice knife as well. This is a Gerber folding thing, which is very useful for unboxing stuff. Overkill perhaps, but nice nonetheless. Now, oh, I'm going to bring the camera closer so you can see what I'm seeing. So, open the box up, and we've got our little note saying about how it's 100% brand new aftermarket parts, conforming to original OE standards and uh, fit and function, made from premium quality components and quality tested and factory sold direct, so better prices, and they are actually very affordable. So we've got this nice big, thick padded stuff. Open the box. This looks like someone's taken a bit of care and effort to make sure it's all packaged nicely, so it arrives safely with it. It's not just chucked in here with a bit of old newspaper, sort of scruffy old bubble wrap. This actually looks like well thought out and these actually look quite nice as well let's have a look at what we've got here in the bags God, that's some weight to that that feels like a quality component it's incredibly heavy oops right now well, well first of all i love the color bright yellow um, which stands out this is a solid bottom end i noticed first of all down here on this front strut it's got the uh, brake hose clamp which some of the aftermarket stuff seems to leave off so that's a nice little addition having that on there then we've got nicely anodized black screw thread for the uh, the strut tower and check out this beautiful bronze aluminium anodized stuff looks fantastic that is going to look awesome against the silver of the car and the spring looks nice as well and it's just a crazy thing to say but nice nice quality powder coating on the spring and there's even a nice rubber uh, boot on there keeping the dirt and grunge out of this thing now, one thing I should say at this point, these aren't actually listed as Rover components on their website because they don't list any Rover items, but they do list a lot of Honda items. And as we have mentioned many times on the channel before, the Rover R8, the 200 to 400, is basically a Honda underneath. And the Honda is basically a Rover underneath as well. So the Rover and the Honda parts should be interchangeable. And looking at this, it does look exactly the same as the Rover struts I've taken off in the past. This here, little narrow bit slots into the um, the cup on the uh, lower arm of the Rover 200. You may remember me having a lot of battles with the Tomcat on that one before. This will bolt up into the top strut and oh, looking on the rear one here, let's quickly take out this bag. Now this sits around the lower arm this box up inside the boot. This looks like it will be an easy direct fit. Now I've got this thing out. Let's have another quick look 
at the rear strut. Looks, this looks really nicely made. The quality of all the paint, the fit and finish, it's absolutely excellent. It's actually rather a shame to be mounting this top part up into the top strut mounts because you're going to lose all this nice bit of etching and not going to see this lovely orange anodization. Now, of course, these things are adjustable for ride height, so you can adjust it with these uh, adjusters here. And of course, we have got a pair, oops, a pair of spanners for that just here. Well, these do look really, really nice. I'm very, very impressed with this. So I'm just examining it all. We've got a nice, looks like a polyurethane uh, bush at the top, keeping it all in place. This should be a nice install, actually. I'm actually quite looking forward to doing something on this car at last. Now you might not have come across Max Speeding Rods before, they're a relatively new company being established in 2006, but apparently they've managed to increase their sales by 200% every year and have sold to 3 million customers worldwide. In 2012 they set up their own R&D labs, creating stuff for race and street applications, and in 2019 they actually started their own race team as well. So although they're a fairly young company, they're quite well established in the tuning industry. Now if you would like to get some Max Speeding Rods gear for your car, and they do a ridiculous number of items for a massive range of cars, use code MATT for 8% off on literally everything on the site and if you've got a Rover R8 which isn't listed go and head for the Honda Civic EK, EJ and EM section and this is the height adjustable uh, suspension kit. So in theory this will slot in easily here in the front of the car. I mean, you may recall I had a bit of a battle with the Tomcat. Hopefully we won't have such a bad um, fight with this particular car. It'll just drop straight in and everything will be lovely. Well, which would be nice if it did but we'll see how that goes. Ah, and this We'll just drop in neatly here in the back. And the ones that are in there now, I can see the arch gap is just so insane. When on the Tomcat, I'm measuring the arch gap in like two, two and a bit fingers. On this one, I put my entire hand between the tire and the arch when that is well gone. Looks rotten, looks rusty. This is gonna be a massive improvement, not only in this car's ride and handling, but if you happen to glance under the arch, that is gonna look so smart. I even worn a nice matching T-shirt today. Well, I am so glad to have this project back on track because I was getting really quite dejected with it last week, but now I'm sort of feeling a lot more positive, partly because it runs, partly because this is going to make the thing look an awful lot better. And that runs, I can take it for an MOT and uh, get the hood sorted out as well. So I don't want to spend a massive amount of money. This looks like it's been a good investment in terms of making the car just an awful lot more appealing. It may not make a lot more when it comes to, or any more, when it comes to selling it on, but certainly it'll make me like it a lot more. And for me, that's what counts, because let's face it, I was not gonna get my money back if I broke it. I'm not gonna get my money back if I sell it in one piece, but I'll probably get more and I'll feel better about myself. And it's gonna be an awful lot cooler than it would have been otherwise. So I'm very, very happy with these Max Speeding Rods items. There's a link down in the description below if you wanna grab a set for yourself. Just look down below and you'll find a link down there. Right, now, it seems to be a fairly common trait in my videos that I'm going to have to quickly sign off because it's about to pour with rain. I don't know if you can see the sky clouding over all of a sudden. I can actually feel spits of rain. I might actually wash some of this bird diarrhea off. But yes, I will say goodbye for now. If you want to hit like and subscribe, hit the bell notification. That makes a big difference to the channel. When I do fit these in the next few days, well, week or two, um, you'll see these going on. See how much of a battle this car actually puts up because, let's face it, it's Quentin. He's going to fight. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going to have ourselves a very nice convertible before too long, hopefully before next summer at the rate we're going. Well, thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you again next time.